Hello and a wet welcome back to the channel of nonsense. Now, when the Skoda Kamek first came out back in 2018, I went on the launch and I drove it and I thought, well, that's the most boring do-it-all car I've ever driven. And then six months later, I had my first child and I started to realize actually, that's kind of all you want sometimes because children come into your life, they take all your money and they fill your boot with stuff you didn't know you needed. And suddenly I had no money, I needed boot space, I needed a practical do-it-all car and that would have been me getting a Kamek. But anyway, it's a rival to Nissan Duke. It's just been updated for 2024 with new looks, new interior bits, more tech. I'm out here in very, very sunny Frankfurt. Not Frankfurt, the hills outside Frankfurt. Find out if it's any good. Prepare yourself for a very wobbly, rainy video. <laughs> Let's go. Right, I've come out here into one of Germany's hottest dogging spots to try and get out of the rain, but I've slightly failed. At least the car is blocking all the discarded prophylactics down there. It's genuinely disgusting. This though, isn't. How's that for a segue? This is the facelifted Kamek. It costs from £24,000 for an entry-level SE model in the UK, up to £27,000 for a mid-spec SEL. Top spec Monte Carlo like this is 29 grand. So it's a crossover SUV that can be had with all the bells and whistles for under 30 grand, which these days is pretty good. Now, underneath, it's very similar to the Scala hatchback, but yeah, it does look slightly different if you know what you're looking for. These these daytime running lights here are slimmer. They are broken into four crystals now, so they're a bit more defined. And the headlight used to come out over here. It's now a bit boxier, and the LEDs are standard now, so you don't have that horrible thing where one of them's a yellow halogen bulb, the others are white LEDs. It's all LED, and you can upgrade to matrix LEDs now as well. They've got eight segments in, so you can leave your main beam on, it'll uh, mask out oncoming cars, parked cars, and things like that, so you don't dazzle everyone else. The grille is a bit wider. Skoda's designer just told us that it's designed to make it look more butch, these changes. I know, that's a bit like saying I've given my hamsters knuckle dusters and now is going to fight Tyson Fury. But whatever, it looks a bit better than before. And I quite like it in orange. How many orange ones are we going to see in the UK? I can probably count that on the hairs on my head. Now, the Kamek's actually only 4.2 metres long, so it is a bit shorter than the Scala, and the boot's a bit smaller as well. You've got 400 litres, which is actually on paper slightly less than even the Nissan Juke. But if you look at a Nissan Juke's boot, it's got weird cutouts that make it not the most usable space. This is nice and square. I mean, admittedly, it's a press car, so it's got some kind of ferret hammock in the back, but it's got the usual things. It's got an optional white, clean floor mat. You've got quite a bit of underfloor space as well. Now, if you do want a bigger boot, then the Renault Capture is slightly up on this as well. Or the Skoda Scala has got a 467 litre boot, so it's quite notably bigger than this. And obviously, top spec Monte Carlo ones get an optional electric closing boot. New for the facelift, got some slightly tweaked rear lights. These are a different shape down here, if you're paying attention. And on some models, you can add the option to do the kick your foot under there to open the boot thing. I've never had that actually work for me in 10 years of doing this job, but hey, it's an option. Right, let's get out of the horrible rain and look at the Skoda Kamek's cabin. And yeah, it is one of Skoda's more affordable models there, so you don't get quite the same opulence that you get in the bigger Karok and Kodiak SUVs. But things are still decent, and this facelift does up the digital ante somewhat. You get a digital dashboard, which comes in one of two sizes, depending on whether you get an entry-level model or a mid-spec model. Same with the central entertainment screen. This is the bigger 9-inch version. There is a smaller 8-inch one, which in the UK will get on SE models. I would say that smaller one is slightly better than this in that it's got a physical volume knob. This one you've got to touch the screen or use the steering wheel controls. Yeah, the steering wheel in this Monte Carlo one, it is heated and it's also got a shortcut button so you can very quickly turn off the speed limit warning which is now standard on all 2024 models. You've got new for the facelift, some physical climate control dials down there. Skoda says we all whinged about having them on a touch screen before so we've now got physical knobs so people are listening and we are getting back to the ways of the knob which is good. Down there you've got some driving mode buttons, self parking on this Monte Carlo. Manual handbrake which is a little bit old school but you do get an armrest I think on all models and then you've got a little bit of a cubby hole down there. Now there's a wireless phone charger in here as well which charges at 40, no not 45, 15 watts which is three times faster than it used to and it's got active cooling as well so you don't melt your iPhone. It's also got two USB-C's down there which I think are 45 watts, I've got that one right. 
I don't really like the fake carbon fiber up there, but on lesser models, the SE and the SEL, that's gonna be cloth, like in the electric Enyaq. And I quite like that, adds a bit of a nice ambiance to the cabin. But yeah, by and large, looks nicer in here, looks more up to date and is more usable thanks to those climate controls. Now, there is one other new area of the Kamex cabin. I can't show it to you really, but the headlining structure that supports what's normally here when there's not the sunroof, that's now made of hemp. So you can close all the doors and windows of your car, set fire to the roof and have the best time anyone's ever had in a Skoda Kamek. I'm not sure if hemp quite works like that, but we can pretend for the sake of this video and light entertainment. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you'll know that I'm six foot three. And in the back of most similarly sized SUVs in the same class as this Kamek, I feel a bit like one of those chickens that's been put inside of a duck, that's been put inside of a turkey, inside of a quail. In this, I feel like a free range bald man. I feel really good. Got loads of knee room, loads of foot room. It's a nice angle on the seat back. And it just feels very roomy. It helps that this Monte Carlo one's got a panoramic sunroof as well. And that doesn't even eat into the headroom. So yeah, loads of room. The sensor tunnel in this one is being bolstered by the addition of a plastic cup holder add-on. There are two USB-Cs down here. The Isofix points are dead easy to get to because there is no flap covering them, which is quite handy. The door bins are a decent-ish size, enough to fit a small bottle of Coke, not one of the one and a half litre ones, the 330 mil ones, you know what I mean. And I like the floating door handles as well. Not sure about the fake carbon fiber kind of fabric on the Monte Carlo one. That's all scratchy hard plastic, but so what? It's based on an affordable platform. It's roomy. What more do you want? Oh, I actually want to go and drive it. Should we go and do that? I forgot my Segway. Not like the guy that invented Segways. The kind of two wheel things that died by cycling off a cliff on a Segway. What a way to go. Right, it's raining. I'm boring. Let's go touring in the Skoda Kamek. Yeah, I'm in a Monte Carlo version with a one litre petrol engine with 116 horsepower, which is a bit more power. It used to get 110, but they've upped it. In the facelift, they've created a new second generation of those one litre engines. There's still the entry level 95 horsepower version. And I have to say, this feels like enough engine for this car for day-to-day -day driving. I've been out on the motorway and frankly, it still gets up to motorway speeds just as well as the 1.5 litre 150 horsepower option, which I've driven off camera as well. So there's not really a bad engine choice these days. You do need the 116 horsepower, the 150, if you want an automatic gearbox though. But yeah, how's the Kamek drive? Well, it's sure-footed, it's stable, it doesn't lean too much in corners, and it just feels very, very grippy and, well, it's not gonna be exciting, is it? But it is a confidence-inspiring car, especially on very, very wet German twisty roads. And yeah, you can do 60 mile an hour down a country twisty road without feeling like you're gonna fall out of your seat. It helps that, again, I'm in the Monte Carlo one with the fancy, slightly huggier sports seats, which give you a bit of a bear hug. It's a bit like the Scala. I've got a video review coming of the facelifted Scala. It's not aiming to be a particularly exciting car to drive. It's just solid, feels dependable. It's quiet at motorway speeds as well without too much wind or tire noise. And for an SUV at this price point, that's kind of all the boxes ticked, frankly. The engines are also decently efficient. You're going to get more than 50 mpg from all of them pretty easy easily, frankly. And yeah, if you get that 1.5 petrol, that can switch off half of its cylinders at a cruise to save fuel. Now that bonging you can hear is the speed limit warning, which is now mandatory on all cars made from 2024 onwards. And on some cars, you can turn it off by going through menus on the touchscreen, getting all distracted, crashing into grannies and that sort of thing. In this, you press a button on the steering wheel and then press another button on the steering wheel and it turns off that noise. It's easy. You do have to do it every time you turn the car off and restart it, but that's not too much for faff. Chill out, German rain. Now, being a do-it-all family car sort of thing, you'd expect the Kamek to be easy to live with, and it is. The visibility is good. The mirrors are nice and big. You've got a bit of a blind spot over your shoulder at the back, but that's true of every modern car, really, with the latest crash test rules. And yeah, the automatic gearbox in this one, I have to say, it's okay, but it does feel slightly better suited to the 1.5 petrol engine, where it shifts really quickly. In this three cylinder, when you accelerate and it changes gear for you, oh, it's not gonna do it because I'm going up a hill, but <laughs> you do get a bit of that in between gear changes. Yeah, it's a bit old at school M3 CSL with the delay in the gear changes in the three cylinder engine, but you're not gonna drive this like an M3 CSL. So what am I going on about? Just telling you that the gearbox can be a bit clunky. 
So yeah, to quickly sum up how the new facelifted Skoda Kamek drives, it's much the same as the old one. The three cylinder engine is slightly less lumpy feeling perhaps than before, but it's still a three cylinder, still got a nice growl to it. The automatic gearbox can be a bit slow when paired with that engine, but otherwise this drives well, the ride is decent. Oh, and in the Monte Carlo one with the optional sports suspension, you can switch between sport and uh, softer suspension mode. I'll just leave it in normal, frankly. But yeah, it's a good car to drive, does what you want it to do, grips. You can drive like a normal car. It's unremarkable in the most modern, good sort of ways. Let's go back to me for some sort of outro. Hopefully not in the rain. Back in 2018, when I was a childless, handsome young go-getter with a mane full of flowing blonde hair, I thought the Skoda Kamek was so good at all the boring stuff that it was itself quite boring. But now I've had kids, now I've driven this updated version, I'm more convinced than ever, actually, that this might just be peak Skoda because it does the sensible, practical stuff that you actually need when you're at Tesco in the rain, when you've got things to put in the boot you want to get your kids in and not have them kick the bejesus out the back of your seat. It does all those things without breaking the bank. It's a very cost of living crisis sort of crossover and now it's got a dash more appeal a bit more technology it comes in orange now at least I doubt we'll get that in the UK hopefully we do but yeah it is a very good solid choice if you're after a Nissan Duke but want a car that doesn't make you look like a Nissan Duke owner so there we go but anyway if you've enjoyed this video please like it please subscribe to the channel go down to the comments leave me the check word for hemp and I'll see you next time when it won't be raining and there won't be yeah, discarded things full of stuff that I wish I didn't have to see. Goodbye. <laughs>